So my name is Dan Rades and I'm on the OpenStack team and I'm currently focused on OPNFE, working in the OPNFE community and integrating OpenStack into OPNFE, uh, specifically Triple O and working on the installer project in OPNFE named Apex, which is um, kind of a wrapper around Triple O that we, we consume upstream Triple O and add features to it specific to NFE and then work to take those features that we've added in NFE and then um, move them into upstream Triple O as new features in Triple O. NFE has become a more stable platform, I think. I wouldn't call it a stable platform, but it, it has become more of something viable to use, something that you can pick up and deploy and have uh, kind of a base OpenStack plus SDN solution plugged into it. Um, I, I think NFE, at least when OPNFE started, NFE was very much a, an idea and there wasn't a lot of technical substance that was backing what NFE was, but over the past couple years of OPNFE going from this idea into what it is today, we've um, collected a lot of experience and a lot of interaction with other projects to build a platform that has become stable enough that you can deploy it and have a, a baseline OpenStack plus SDN deployed uh, very quickly, very easily with, um, with kind of a prescriptive deployment methodology. In the Okada OpenStack release, the OPNFE Apex project was able to start to move pieces into the upstream that we hadn't yet had a chance to move into the upstream. Um, in particular, the Open Daylight support has landed in Okada and uh, the Congress support, uh, the policy management service in OpenStack has landed, the um, NFVM Tacker has also landed in Okada, specifically in RDO. Uh, e each of these projects were available and, and able to be used, but were um, not integrated into RDO and integrated into Triple O in a way that you could um, switch them on and have them deploy as any other piece of OpenStack would deploy in a Triple O deployment. Uh, so in Okada, we were able to, to do that integration and um, have those pieces readily available for consumers for uh, deployments that use Triple O and RDO as their deployment methodology. Lots of new features coming in Pike. Um, there's a lot of very low-level networking stuff that is is coming. Um, you know, the network acceleration, data plane acceleration that is important to NFE, um, much more so Im important to NFE than it is to general OpenStack installations. Uh, we're also working on helping Triple O have ARM support. The NFE community wants RDO to run on ARM, and so. Um, OPNFE and Triple O are working together now to help the RDO packaging, um, which the packaging is already there. A lot of it is is working on Triple O and making the the disk images in Triple O and the the disk image building in Triple O available for ARM. Um, really, a lot of it is is wrangling resources and. Um, correcting the, the little things that have been written specifically for the x86 platform and then building CI around it. So at this point we're collecting hardware and collecting all the pieces and, and starting to move forward with um, you know, making sure that we have, uh, we're, we're developing on CentOS, so making sure we have our CentOS platform to do uh, our, our builds and our development on and then work on getting the, the packages into an overcloud and making sure overcloud and undercloud are both built. Um, and then hopefully that'll be kind of a, a baseline ARM triple O deployment at which point the Apex project and OPNFV can consume those disk images and um, add our NFE specific features that we're working on and developing in the OPNFV community and then um, have support for both the x86 as well as the ARM platform. A lot of the ARM vendors are really pushing in the, the NFE workspace to uh, have that ARM support and so it's um, I think that work there will, will benefit multiple different communities when we're able to complete it. Is that ARM CI going to run in the in the, the CentOS infrastructure you said, or is that happening in, in the 
OpenStack Foundation is about it? We're going to fold it into RDOCI at okay. this point. Um, ARM.com has provided a couple servers that we're doing the initial development on. And as long as we can use those servers uh, for RDOCI, they'll be, after we finish the development, they'll be pushed into the RDOCI environment. So we'll have a couple ARM specific servers that we'll be able to at least do builds on. I'm, I'm not sure if we'll. Uh, virtualize ARM servers on x86 hardware, or if we'll do bare metal, or if we're just going to produce disk images and, and uh, smoke test them in a, a simple way. But um, we've got a couple pieces of hardware that we, um, when we get done development, push into RDFCI, and, and hopefully that'll be a catalyst for uh, more hardware to be able to do further CI and, and um, more invasive CI on the, on the ARM side and really test it as well as we do the Intel side. So we're doing this interview midway through Wednesday. How has the PTG been for you and your team? I showed up this morning at 6 oh, a.m. So, <laughs> so uh, it's, um, it, you know, the, the morning, I've, I've been here for the morning, basically. Yeah, but, it, okay. um, you know, I, a lot of times you talk about these conferences in a way that they're, um, for me, interacting with the people that you come to meet ends up always being, um, it, Far more valuable than the particular sessions that happen, and and uh, this is no exception. It's good to be in these working sessions, and I feel like we get a lot of work done in them. And it's it's always valuable to meet face to face. Uh, but there's also the conversations over lunch and in between sessions that are always very valuable to um, you know just have a face to face conversation with someone that you don't ever see their face because you're on IRC or phone or, or whatever. And, um, so it's I don't know that there's one like fantastic um, glowing thing that's happened that or that I really <coughs> expect to happen necessarily over the next couple of days, but um, working so distributed in, in a, a very global team like this, the, the value of coming together and shaking someone's hand and seeing them face to face and having a conversation where you can see their expressions and, and see how they respond is uh, to me important and, and very valuable. You know, I, I think my work and family balance is what I'm really passionate about now. I've got three little boys and they're growing up and, um, you know, being able to work hard at my job and, and do well for the company and, and be involved in the communities and be um, excited about the work that I'm doing, you know, not just pulling a paycheck or doing something that is on my to-do list that someone's expecting me to get done. Um, and being able to bring that home and represent it to my kids, but still be able to do that in a way that I get to spend a, an ample amount of time with my kids to lead them and to love them and to care for them. Uh, I think just having that balance between um, spending time with my wife and my kids and my family, but uh, doing the best that I can do in, in my work and um, you know caring for myself in the process, being sure that I'm um, healthy and active and. and um, able to do well at, at what's happening in my life is um, is a very 10,000 foot view of passions I think <laughs> but uh, is is what I think about a lot and try and center decisions I make around um, being able to do well in all those areas.